it's just very distracting. You know, it, I wouldn't want anybody to come to my house or, you know, I wouldn't go to anybody's house and start carving. Bandelier National Monument uh, was occupied by the ancestral Pueblo people from um, around 13 to 1400 to into the 1500s, um, and it was abandoned sometime, we believe, in the late 1500s. Um, we have a couple of different areas of occupation here, and one of the most interesting things at Bandelier are the, the cave aids. Um, there are actually caves that were carved into the soft volcanic tuff that was deposited here um, by volcanic eruptions. And, um, the caves are, are really amazing resources. They were actually all hand dug. And if you can imagine actually coming out here and using stones in your hands and baskets to actually carve out caves into the side of a cliff. Um, so that was part of their occupation. And here at Bandelier, we have um, about 1,100 cave eights just here in Frijoles Canyon alone. The problem that we've encountered is, is graffiti. Um, there's a, a huge amount of visitation that comes through here at Bandelier. We have about 300,000 visitors per year that come through the park. And of those 300,000 people, there are some that, um, that, leave, that want to leave their mark here at Bandelier. And um, graffiti has become a pretty big problem here at the park. Um, people carve into the, into the prehistoric plasters and into the, um, into the sooted tuff here that we have here. And uh, you know, we're talking about original materials and people are carving into it and, and leaving their names and dates and initials and uh, lots of different symbols that they've been here. And we're trying to eradicate that. The work that we're going to be doing today is uh, graffiti mitigation, and this cave that we're working in is a highly public cave aid. It's one of people's favorite cave to go into because it's one of the largest, and um, it's also believed to be a kiva, which was a, a ceremonial structure. The primary reason that we treat all the graffiti, um, there's really two reasons. One is it's just very disrespectful and to the site and the importance of the site here. Um, it's also very disruptive to the visitor's experience. The last thing anybody wants to see when they come out here is to see modern graffiti. Um, it's also important to treat the graffiti to reduce incidents of future graffiti. Uh, there have been a lot of studies throughout the country and world that show that people are much more likely to create graffiti in areas where they already see graffiti or graffiti is already existing. The way we do it is by uh, lighting resinous wood on fire, and we actually use a traditional method of treating the ceiling, and we re-soot it, and the black smoke covers up the graffiti. We basically use some small blow torches to light these, uh, light these little sticks, and then we hold them very close to the surface of, of the wall um, and simply move them back and forth to deposit the, the soot where it's really needed on the wall. Even though we don't see people from the past here, I'm pretty sure they're still around, and you know, I, I'm pretty sure they don't want to see all these graffiti on the walls, and that's what we're trying to do is um, trying to cover up the graffiti. If you cover up graffiti, you know, the idea is to that hopefully other folks visiting the park won't do the same thing. You know, if they don't see any graffiti, it's um, it makes it look that much nicer. 